a surge of migrants are crossing into the United States every day. And Cochise County Sheriff Mark Daniel says it's causing a big problem. Nine on your side's Greg Bradbury shows us why that surge isn't the only problem they're facing. You will stroke with the pen, we're done. When President Biden's executive order was signed to stop construction of the border wall, it stopped, but it left gaps for local authorities. We're on our own out here. Cochise County Sheriff Mark Daniels says this isn't what they wanted. This is worse now than it was before. There was no infrastructure but mountains. Now we have infrastructure and we have holes in our wall. Now here you can see one of the holes in the wall. They just put up a makeshift fence to prevent people from coming in. But as the wall continues up, once you get to the top, it just ends. And that creates a path for migrants to cross into the United States. We just build infrastructure for the cartels. Mountains kept smugglers and migrants away, but a path used for construction vehicles is now being used by those trying to get into the United States. And based on the stats, 2,500 to 4,000 people a day on the southwest border being apprehended. And that doesn't include the getaways. Is this a crisis at the border? This is a crisis all along the southwest border, and it's all built around a hasty decision, a hasty executive order, and lack of collaboration between local, state, and the federal. He is now in talks with Governor Ducey about using the National Guard to help. We're planning on meetings here in the near future to discuss what's the best approach. Daniels is looking for a seat at the table. State, local, and federal all share the same communities. We have to work together. It's disrespectful. It's frustrating. We need answers. Greg Bradbury, KGUN 9, on your side. Also in Co Cochise County, Customs and Border Protection is closing down three highway checkpoints in the Wilcox area. The agency says it's a response to the increase of migrants along the border. Earlier this year, the checkpoints began closing, but smaller staff were still on site to help with security. Now the checkpoints will close entirely, and that will free up staff to deal with the migrant surge. And tomorrow morning, a new group of people will be eligible to register for the COVID-19 vaccine in Pima County. As Nine on Your Side's Rogelio Mars reports, health officials are already talking about when the next group in line will get their turn. At 9 a.m. on Friday, Pima County will be in the next phase of its COVID-19 vaccine distribution. A new group of people will be eligible to register for their shot. This includes 55 and over, as well as frontline essential workers. The previous group was limited to anyone older than 65 and healthcare workers, first responders, and educators. So what exactly is a frontline essential worker? Frontline essential worker is someone that needs to work with the public and they routinely are less than six feet for more than 15 minutes in those situations. The county listed anyone who works a manufacturing job at grocery stores, restaurants and bars, postal employees, public transit workers, Uber, Lyft and taxi drivers, as well as government employees. Thursday afternoon, President Joe Biden set a goal of allowing everyone in the country to qualify for a vaccine by May. Back in Pima County, Dr. Collins says getting to the next group will rely on the vaccine stock. If the vaccine becomes more available, then those proposed timelines make sense. We have been given information to believe that by the last week in March, first week in April, we will have more information, both uh, more immunization, both Johnson & Johnson, Pfizer and Moderna. Cullen says so the I county the expected to have 300,000 people vaccinated by this month. She reported 330,000 vaccines administered so far. If you qualify to register on Friday, you can find out how on our website, kgun9.com. Rogelio Mades, KGUN 9, on your side. The Community Food Bank of Southern Arizona looking back on the past year since the pandemic began. Now, last year, the food bank was hosting massive drive through events at Kino Sports Complex. Now they've moved back to their location on South Country Club and are seeing fewer people come through. But as Tucson rebounds from the pandemic, the CEO of the food bank says, He's thankful for everyone who helped out over the past year. This is a year later, we're still outside. Thank goodness our community volunteers are here helping out every time that our clients and our community members in need are here. We're grateful for the Arizona National Guard who are helping to box up food to get it out here. We're so grateful for our donors who have been really generous throughout all of this pandemic. 
I'm grateful that we got so much fresh produce, which is happening here today. We've got tomatoes and potatoes, and thank you for helping feed Southern Arizona. And some more good news. The new jobless claim numbers show hope for an improving economy. The late department says 712,000 Americans filed claims last week. Now that's down 42,000 from the week before. There's also a boost in the number of jobs. Last month, employers added nearly 280,000 new positions. Now, despite the uptick, there still have been nearly 10 million jobs lost during the pandemic. And in his first primetime address, uh, President Joe Biden delivered hopeful news to the nation. He says every state should prepare to make vaccines available to all adults in the country by May 1st, and that by the 4th of July, Americans should really have something to celebrate. ABC's Mary Alice Parks has more on the president's speech. President Biden marking a somber moment in the nation's history. One year since the outbreak of the novel coronavirus declared a global pandemic. Biden saying he carries this card in his pocket. As of now, total deaths in America, 527,726. That's more deaths than in World War I, World War II, the Vietnam War, and 9-11 combined. But on this occasion, he had uplifting news, announcing all adults in the country should be eligible for a vaccine dose by May 1st. Let me be clear. That doesn't mean everyone's going to have that shot immediately, but it means you'll be able to get in line beginning May 1. Earlier this month, the White House helping to broker a deal between two pharmaceutical competitors, Merck and Johnson & Johnson, now working together to manufacture Johnson & Johnson's single-shot coronavirus vaccine to boost the supply. Just hours before his speech, President Biden, too, signed his first major bill into law, rushing economic stimulus and relief to millions of Americans in need. The $1.9 trillion law will send most Americans a $1,400 direct payment. It will extend unemployment benefits through early September and provide billions of dollars more for vaccines, testing, housing assistance, and struggling small businesses. Tonight, President Biden ending his speech leaning in with this ask. I need you to get vaccinated when it's your turn and when you can find an opportunity. And to help your family, your friends, your neighbors get vaccinated as well. He said he hopes families and friends separated this last year will be able to watch fireworks together in small groups this 4th of July and celebrate the nation's triumph over this virus. Mary Alice Parks, ABC News, Washington. And President Biden now has a new attorney general. You see him there, Merrick Garland. He was sworn in today. He received strong bipartisan support during his confirmation hearing. Garland says his first priority will, to, uh, will be to fully prosecute the crimes committed at the U.S. Capitol on January 6th. Now let's check in with Kyler Diggs. Another gorgeous day today, but you know, tonight you're gonna need a jacket. Yeah, that's right. And you certainly will need to keep that jacket handy over the next couple of days with the changes we've got headed our way. We did make it up to 71 degrees in Tucson. Look at that. All the surrounding communities in the 60s, except for Safford, where we went to 73 degrees, and it was pretty cool just off to our north. 50 in Sholo, only in the 40s in Prescott. Let's go ahead and take a look at the radar. That rain, it is knocking on our door right now. We've seen those showers over western Pima County. Let's fly over there, take a little closer look. You can see the counterclockwise circulation in the precipitation pattern right here. Even a little bit of snow in the mountains east of LA. So there is some very cold air associated with this. And we've seen some showers in Phoenix as well. But this is going to stay right about here overnight tonight. And then it'll start to move east a little bit as we go through the day tomorrow. And then we'll be talking about what this is going to bring. Currently it's 56 degrees. We may not even reach that in one of our high temperatures coming up. Ooh, that sounds cold. Kyler, thank you. To International News Today marks a decade since Japan was devastated by that tsunami and nuclear disaster. A memorial service honored the 20,000 victims of the twin tragedies. The emperor, empress, and prime minister attending the ceremony held in Tokyo. The earthquake that triggered the tsunami was the biggest in Japan's history. That tsunami then set off a nuclear meltdown at the Fukushima power plant. That area is still uninhabitable. 
Depression and anxiety on the rise during the pandemic and those seeking help also increasing. After the break, a look at how a local clinic is helping patients overcome their stress and rebound. You're watching Kega 9 on your side. Now to our Kega 9 initiative, The Rebound Arizona. New data shows the effect of the pandemic on our mental health. And one report shows a 300% increase in anxiety and depression since the start of the pandemic. And tonight, a Tucson clinic helps us understand the numbers and how to get help. Before the pandemic, you know, people were struggling with um, anxiety, depression, other um, mental health diagnoses. Um, it was about 10% of the U.S. population, and now that's up to 40%. Lakila Ahmed is citing a recent study by the Kaiser Family Foundation, a nonprofit focusing on national health issues. As a therapist, Ahmed agrees with the findings of the study. She says she sees people having to deal with a lot more over the past 12 months than the usual things that cause stress and anxiety. Now they're struggling with the pandemic, mm -hmm. um, race relations, politics, um, employment issues. And so depression and anxiety are definitely on the increase. Yeah. And there's more of a need um, for services. Ahmed says her clinic associated with quality of life near TMC has seen an increase in patients who have never sought help before. Never experienced anything that they could put a name to. Okay. Um, didn't know what it was called. Didn't know, you know, what they were experiencing. Is this, you know, everyday depression or is it clinical? Like, do I need help? Mm -hmm. Do I need outside help? And so people are more open to that now. Um, which is good. So that's one of the things that we try to do as well, you know, provide psychoeducation to the patient, to the family, so that they can help support the person who might be struggling with mental illness. Ahmed says during therapy, they help patients learn and use coping skills to manage the anxiety and manage the depression. Now, for more on the behavioral health services through Quality of Life, check out the web version of this story at kgun9.com. All right, we're going to bring in Tyler Diggs now. Yeah, you're going to need those jackets uh, tonight, the next few days, right? Sure will. That 71 that we had today in the lower 70s we've been enjoying, that's going to feel pretty balmy compared to what I've got to share with you in your seven-day forecast. Plus, as temperatures warm up, southern Arizona's wildlife come out to play, and that could mean your pet encountering a wild animal with rabies. What you can do to protect your pets. That's next. You're watching Kega 9 on your side. The spring weather is making wild animals more active and more likely to tangle with your pet. As Nine on Your Side's Craig Smith reports, the Pima County Animal Care Center says that makes it even more important to ensure your pet has a rabies vaccination. When this Kawati Monday walked into a yard, two dogs ran up to investigate. And there was some sort of scuffle involving the two dogs and the Kota Monday. Uh, one dog had a rabies vaccination, so that dog is actually uh, doing the quarantine at home but the other dog did not have a rabies vaccination. So that dog's gonna have to spend the 120 days here at the shelter. So that's four months of this dog's life. Beautiful weather can make you, your pet and wild animals more active. So there's more chance right now for your animal to make contact with a wild one. That contact can lead to a long quarantine to make sure your pet did not get infected with rabies. What Nikki Reck of Pima Animal Care Center just said bears repeating. If your animal had a rabies vaccination, contact with a wild animal means 45 days quarantine at home. If your pet never had a rabies shot, that means four months in quarantine at the shelter. I think the big thing is to just be aware of your pet. Make sure that they're not anywhere where you can't see them. And maybe if they're in the backyard, especially this time of year, just keep an eye on them, be out there with them. You know, if they're using, if they're playing, play with them um, and, and, and keep those vaccines up to date. And she says there are organizations that offer low-cost rabies shots. You can find contacts for them in our web story at kgun9.com. Craig Smith, KGUN9 on your side. Now, KGUN9 on your side. First warning weather. Well, I think a lot of creatures will be seeking some shelter over the next couple of days as some cold air returns to southern Arizona. It's going to be feeling a lot more like winter over the next 48 hours. 56 degrees right now in Tucson. Not bad. 37 degrees on the dew point. That continues to come up as we start to bring some of that moisture in out ahead of that low pressure system. The wind has settled down a little bit too. We don't expect much wind overnight tonight, but we will see some increasing clouds and temperatures. 
temperatures dropping into the 40s. We continue to see a little bit of light snow in the higher elevations of northern Arizona, where we are already in the 20s at the Grand Canyon and into Flagstaff. And look at Vegas checking in at 44 degrees, 50 in Havasu. Yeah, that cold air is on the move and it's headed our direction. Here's a look at some of the high temperatures across the western United States today, where we only saw 43 degrees in Reno, 48 in Salt Lake City and 30 degrees in Casper, Wyoming. So definitely a cold pool of air is heading our direction. And that rain, it is just off to the west of us. It's teasing us tonight, and it'll eventually come through here tomorrow as the low pressure system continues to make its way to the east very slowly. It kind of took a little bit of a break tonight and is just kind of sitting there right west of Los Angeles. And as we see that low pressure system off to the west of us, we will see our wind speeds kicking up again in the afternoon and evening hours. Anywhere from 20 to 25 miles an hour will be pretty common. And then on Saturday, the wind will shift around, become a little bit more out of the west northwest, importing some of that cooler air into the region, and it will continue to be breezy even on Sunday. So here's the latest future cast for you showing where the rain showers will be and eventually the snow showers as well coming in here throughout the day tomorrow. Now initially snow levels will start out about 5,000 feet and then they'll drop down to around 4,000 feet early Saturday morning. The storm system will kind of hang around here for about half of the day on Saturday and eventually it'll move out of here Saturday night and leave behind that chilly air. So it will also leave behind a little bit of rain in our rain gauges. Not much though, anywhere from about a trace to about a tenth of an inch is all we're going to do possibly just a little bit more in some of those higher elevations. As far as the snow goes, well, we are not going to see a whole lot of accumulation here either because the moisture is just too limited. But in some of the high mountain valleys, we will see a dusting. And then on some of those mountain tops above 6,000, 7,000 feet, we could see up to four inches of fresh snow. So. We'll take anything we can get, right? Because it has been so dry around here. And overnight tonight, we will see temperatures dropping into the 30s and 40s. Not too cold tonight because we're still on the warm side of that storm system, 29 in Summerhaven. And then for tomorrow, highs only in the 60s, struggling to warm up as that moisture continues to move into the area with the clouds and the wind. It's going to definitely feel chilly tomorrow and especially on Saturday with a high of only 58 degrees. And then when that storm clears the area Saturday night, clear skies, that'll translate into a chilly morning. Sunday morning temperatures dropping back into the mid 30s and it does warm up next week. I right, thank you, Kyler. For many Americans, being cooped up for a year is making them go stir crazy. It's natural to want to escape, and some are doing that. But public health experts say long distance travel is still risky. Ashar Qureshi takes a look at when you might be able to fly again without worry. At the beginning of the outbreak, air travel nearly came to a standstill. But major holidays like spring break and Thanksgiving saw spikes in travel and increased COVID spread. I absolutely think that travel is safer now than it was before. If you're vaccinated, travel is definitely safer for you, but it may not be safer for those around you. 